Ever wonder what it takes to create some real curb appeal? Well, we're gonna give you some details here this morning. And Mark, curb appeal is important. Not only aesthetically, it looks great, but when it comes to maybe getting a house ready for resale, it's critically important, isn't it? It is, and uh, we learned that long time ago with uh, realtors. Actually, if realtors uh, have a home that looks incredible on uh, the inside, but the outside doesn't quite uh, reflect that, uh, they either uh, suggest that their client contact us or actually we've been contacted by a lot of uh, realtors directly. Huh. Well, Stuart and Susan Church are the homeowners here in South Bend. They're near the airport. And a little history here, Mark, can you please on this, this homestead? It's been a work in progress for some time. <laughs> well, when you pull up uh, here, it looks like a brand new house. It does, it's beautiful. And it is a brand new house, um, but it is a huge renovation. And um, both uh, of uh, Susan and uh, Stuart, uh, they were heavily, heavily involved doing the work themselves. And what I understand, it was like a 16, 17 year project <laughs> going on here. I bet they have a healthy marriage. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> they have to if they've been working together as a team like that for a long time. I know they have a healthy baby Great Dane, and that Great Dane is full of energy, right? <laughs> she sure is. And she likes being out of doors, and the reason we bring that up is because the Great Dane had a lot to do with the choice of the ground cover here today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got three dogs uh, which uh, are residing here, and not only the dogs, but we've got a lot of uh, big shade trees that produce leaves, and bark ground cover just simply was not an option. The dogs, if they would go running through the beds, that bark would have <laughs> gone flying. And so uh, the stone works out really, really well for uh, the large uh, dog breeds. And then also, it's very easy to get leaves out of uh, during the fall. You can just use a leaf blower and mm -hmm. blow those leaves uh, right off of the stone ground cover. It looks beautiful. It really <laughs> does. Thank you. And Mark, uh, how about some more detail about <laughs> what you've done here today? Well, uh, to the viewers right there, Craig, uh -huh. is one of our beautiful uh, hydrangeas. Uh, love uh, the gorgeous, uh, huge, uh, blue flowers that yes. it's producing. Wow. And this not only blooms now, it'll continue blooming. You can see some uh, new flower buds, uh, which are starting to appear here. And uh, we've positioned it to here because it only gets to be about uh, three, four feet in height and about the same in width. Want to keep it uh, below the base of uh, the light fixture. Mm -hmm. Blue is always a rarity, isn't it? It in is, your landscaping? and so for that reason, it's prized. Yeah, it stands out. <laughs> What's this? Uh, this is our chocolate snake root, uh, beautiful, deep burgundy colored leaves, uh, fine serrated edges mm -hmm. and um, uh, develops uh, flowers in the springtime. And that's where it gets its name, Craig, uh, snake root, because it has these spikes of long white flowers, which kind of have a snake like uh, resemblance, uh, beautiful good. flowers and beautiful coloration. Now you put a lot of new varieties in here we see, but this land is really just man, covered with old, old trees. And a very nice stately type of look. And yeah. uh, that's the appeal here it is, yeah. uh, for the future homeowners. You go into a new neighborhood uh, where it used to be a, a, a farm field and that, and uh -huh. you just don't have those trees. Hey, a nice work here too. <laughs> well, with thank you. Nice touch. Uh, this is our slender Hinoki Cypress. Does a great job of uh, naturally shaping itself. It's very tall, slender, uh, just like its name. And uh, like for it to get up uh, eventually eight, nine feet to, in height. We really don't have to worry about the width. Uh, this does not get much wider than three to four feet uh, in width. Mm -hmm. What else along the way here, Mark? Well, Craig, part of the architectural features uh, here with the house, we've got this large uh, window in the front and then kind of a blank canvas on uh, each side. Mm -hmm. And so we've got uh, some balance and symmetry going on uh, to the viewers right here. This is an oak leaf hydrangea, another flowering hydrangea, working with a lot of shade loving plants because of all the large uh, trees. Uh, this produces large clusters of uh, white flowers later on in the season. This is one of our largest growing hydrangeas. It can get uh, seven, eight feet in height, five feet in width. And so we will have uh, some height on each side of uh, this window. You really can't go wrong with the hydrangea, can you? <laughs> oh my goodness, especially for uh, summer color. Yeah, they're beautiful. And then we've got uh, perennial flowers uh, along uh, the border here. We're just uh, uh, ending uh, the bloom cycle for uh, the spring blooming of stilbees with the spikes of pink flowers here and the fern-like type of uh, leaves. After they're done uh, blooming, uh, the black-eyed Susans uh, kick in, and of course, uh, they've got the beautiful yellow daisy-like type of flowers. Mm -hmm. Craig, those will bloom all the way up until frost. That is a great feature, isn't it? <laughs> it when is. you think about it, that's a long time. It is a very long time, and I like uh, using these for cut flowers. You can bring them inside the house, and they'll last for about a week to 10 days, just in a glass of water. Mm -hmm. 
now stepping up a little bit closer <laughs> to the front entry. What do you have going on here? We are flanking uh, the front entrance uh, with a couple of uh, pyramidal boxwoods, and uh, these are perfect here for accenting the entrance. Uh -huh. They don't get overly large, and what this does is tie in with the globe boxwood, yes. which we've got uh, underneath the base of the window. These are meant uh, for some height, and of course the globe boxwood underneath the window is going to stay below the base of uh, the window there. Now you've done a great job here too, Mark. Uh, when you talk about curb appeal, you talk about not just the stone ground cover and the new plantings, but also the sidewalk that you put in. Well, thank you. And uh, when I uh, first came out here earlier uh, this year, uh, there was not a sidewalk up to uh, the house. And uh, we wanted to uh, pull it out a little further away from uh, the house, mm -hmm. just because we're blessed with so much uh, land here. And it's also a very wide sidewalk. It's six feet in width. And uh, Stuart's uh, um, vision was uh, he always wanted to have uh, it edged in paving bricks. and. Uh, the paving bricks that you see here, uh, that's called a soldier course. And um, those are all cut and mortared into place. And we picked out a uh, paving brick that has red tones in it. So it matches and ties in with the brick foundation that you see here on uh, the front porch. And then also a little later as we walk around the side, you'll see uh, the brick uh, fireplace as well. You know, just as a casual observer, what I've noticed, landscaping from the 40s, 50s, 60s, a sidewalk like this would be pretty much 45 degree straight <laughs> lines, right? But all Absolutely. of that has changed now. It, it has changed. And what we've done here is move the sidewalk out further away from the house. And what that allows us to do is create a very nice layered type of look. So many contractors make the mistake of having it so close to the house, pretty much yeah. we're limited to, yep. to planting a row of shrubs. You could move a piano in here really easily, <laughs> couldn't you? It's six <laughs> feet wide, so absolutely. I love it. Well, this house will be going on the market if it isn't already, and someone is going to get a gym. This is a beauty of a home. <laughs> it it is. really is. And what you've done here really helps, too. <laughs> well, thank you. We've got some little dwarf hostas, got a couple of them here, and then there's a third one on uh, the other side of uh, the sidewalk and of course uh, those bloom with spikes of flowers earlier in the season which attract hummingbirds and butterflies and of course with the shaded conditions here they're very very happy. Mm -hmm. I love this wraparound porch isn't it it's cool a great beautiful. backdrop to what you've done here. <laughs> and because of uh, the porch and the railing and large uh, bay window behind us we really didn't want to hide those architectural features yeah. and so all of these plantings are meant to stay low. The hydrangeas here which you see a total of three of those they will max out at four Four feet in height, four feet in width. They won't hide uh, the railing. We've got boxwoods incorporated in here for fall and winter interests. They're going to stay low. And also, you know, this house has a lot of amazing details on it. I yes, love uh, the brick here. That. And we just didn't want to hide that. Yeah. And so we kept it nice and open. 20 years from now, you're still going to be able to see and appreciate not only the railing, but you'll be able to see uh, the brickwork as well. So we'll be back in 20 years is what you're saying to do another <laughs> update, huh? Possibly. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> it would be fun. <laughs> well, you know, kudos to Susan and Stuart for having an idea. I mean, they must be big picture people, right? I, they've had a vision. a vision for a long, long time. Yeah. And uh, those dreams are finally becoming reality. But to have a vision like that with an older home that now looks brand new, and then to have you come in and do what you've done. Mark, I tell you what, that's teamwork, really, in, in the very best sense. It's been a great relationship, and it's been a lot of fun. Now, this is one of the favorites, right, of Susan. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is one of our uh, little dwarf uh, tree hydrangeas, and this has been blooming uh, for a couple of months now with these beautiful pinnacle-shaped uh, white flowers, and it will continue to put on uh, additional blooms. Uh, you can see some uh, new buds sure. starting to yeah. form here. And this will bloom into the fall. The these uh, white flower heads actually will turn uh, kind of pinkish tones and then late in the fall when we start having some frost and that uh, they're going to be a real rich deep burgundy color which will look absolutely beautiful with uh, the gray uh, for the exterior of uh, the house. I can tell you are genuinely excited about what's happened here, aren't you? <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> Well, Susan is very happy, too. In fact, uh, Susan and Stuart, the homeowners, have done a curb appeal makeover here that tops all curb appeals, wouldn't you think? Absolutely, Craig. And uh, she was a lot of fun to talk to. Let's catch up now with Susan, one of the homeowners here in beautiful South Bend. 
So happy to have Susan here with us today. Susan, I love your property. I tell you, this is very peaceful back here. It is. It's great. It's great. Now, you and your husband have really created a labor of love here with putting all of these great finishing touches on this property. The home looks brand new, and you've said it's not new. It's no. been here a while. We actually, when we moved into it, um, it had just siding on it. And I said to my husband once, kind of funny, look at those concrete houses. What would it be like to live in a concrete house? When we finally took the old siding off, he yelled at me and said, come here, I want to show you something. We've been living in a concrete house. Serious? Yes, 1945, I believe. Mark really likes the brick along the base here. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, that was, that was Stu's idea, and it's gorgeous. And I like, too, the tree on the end. That's your favorite. That's my favorite, the hydrangea. And it's beautiful, and we even put our little chairs over there so we could sit and, and watch it, and the smell is great. It, it, it's just, it, I didn't think I would get any flowers when we talked about things because I'm face north, I have a lot of big old trees, and Mark said, oh no, I can give you flowers, and so that's nice. Trust the pros at Linton's, right? Yes, you do. Now your dogs, do they like the property too? Yes, <laughs> they do. This is an acre fenced, and the three dogs run, and they love it. Well, I know someone else who loves the property, and that's Mark Linton himself. And Mark is here, uh, going to make a presentation. Uh, too bad your Great Danes aren't around to enjoy this. Okay. <laughs> oh, Susan, you. just want to thank you and Stuart for the opportunity to work for you and also share your home with the viewers. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is so pretty. Well, your dogs are going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> no. 110-pound Great Dane? Puppy. Puppy. They're saying 130. <laughs> they're saying 130. That's fantastic. Susan, thank you so much. Thank you. A beautiful home here, creating curb appeal and doing it with the pros at Linton's. Much more coming up. Stay tuned.